How's it going y'all? Pete here. Uh, today I'm making a video I wish I would not have to make, but I do feel compelled to make it because I think it's important to uh, speak out against wrongs that we see, uh, both to try to bring some accountability to the situation and also to uh, inform others who might interact with the individual. The video today is not about, well it is about a person who sometimes wears a badge, but the badge isn't that of a police outfit. Uh, the badge warrant says shiny badges don't grant extra rights. And the person in question is Lauren Wagner, who goes by Lauren Beth Falconer online. You may have heard of Lauren. She is the uh, she spearheaded the Ladies of Cop Block 2014 calendar. It was my brainchild. This is Lauren. Yes. Um, that was announced in early October, and here we are, uh, over five months later. It has not yet uh, materialized. After it was clear that the uh, calendar would not be printed, uh, people uh, there were promises made that donors would be repaid. Yes, the money's here, the money's been here the whole freaking time, you know, and I'm, you know, going to refund everybody as soon as I can, starting tonight. But that has not happened yet, uh, as of this time this video is being recorded, and again, cop locks decentralized, I really wasn't involved with the calendar project, except for obviously giving support to it. I'm not the first to kind of speak out or weigh in on this situation. Alma Summers from uh, Phoenix area posted to Peace News Now the screenshots of all the conversations had on the Ladies of Cop Block Facebook group. So I encourage you, if you really want to dig in and to, to all, the, uh, all the details, to check that out. Also, uh, more recently, Tony Bowens, one of the founders of the Missouri Kansas Cop Block group, did a post to copblock.org through the submission tab. And she too emphasized that you don't just take her word for it, that you look into it on your own and come to your own conclusions. I first met Lauren at, at the Porcupine Freedom Fest in New Hampshire in the late June of 2013. I thought Lauren was a great person, you know, very energetic, very driven, feisty, definitely her own person. I thought, uh, you know, I was glad to associate with her, glad that uh, shortly after she returned to Baltimore, uh, she started Baltimore Cop Block. I was glad to see that grow so quickly. It seemed like Lauren was doing a good job doing outreach in the area, connecting with people, informing them of their rights, supporting people. Shortly after that, Lauren was on a uh, segment of the Cop Block radio show, uh, which is put out every Wednesday night. And uh, after she got done with that segment, uh, she spoke on the phone with Tony Bones and Janelle Flores in Missouri, Kansas Cop Block. And, uh, kind of just pitch the idea it would be cool if a calendar was made. So Janelle told Lauren, hey, if you want to do it, uh, I'll, I'll assist you. Just let me know. On October 11th, uh, the Ladies of Cop Block Facebook page was created, and the next day the Ladies of Cop Block 2014 calendar video was uh, posted. Hi, I'm Lauren, the founder of Baltimore Cop Block. I'm trying to put together a 2014 Ladies of Cop Block calendar. Each month we'll highlight a different Lady of Cop Block and what she specifically does for her activism. And on every month's calendar, there'll be a tip on how to deal with the police, as well as extra holidays, like the day of the Rodney King verdict. So it'll be educational, as well as something pretty to look at and hang on your wall. On October 17th, Lauren and Janelle joined Angel Clark on her show and uh, talked about the calendar. We do actually film the police, every single girl that is in the calendar. I want daddies to buy these for their daughters and be like, look at these girls, they're doing awesome stuff and you could do awesome stuff too. That was also the date that the Kickstarter campaign went live. Uh, in less than 24 hours, the goal of $750 had been reached. We met our, our goal in like a day. So thank you guys for supporting us so much. It was awesome. When the Kickstarter campaign closed within a month, uh, the goal had been exceeded by almost 200 percent. You know, at that time there was a lot more demand than they had uh, anticipated, so it was decided to uh, do a second um, money bomb to raise some money to get uh, more of a quantity of calendars printed. They could each be printed for a lesser price. You can pay a couple different ways. One is by using Money Pack, and the other is by using Bitcoin. Uh, that was done in late December, but when Lauren shared what she called the finished version of the calendar that was ready to go in the printer with the other people involved, um, there was some discontent with the layout. There was uh, a couple dozen, at least, uh, spelling errors, gra grammatical things, layout issues. Some questions uh, by then had started to emerge about how the money was being handled. A few of them had it in their minds from the beginning that they wanted to be disagreeable and that there wasn't anything I could do about it. 
know. I, I was nothing. Unless I did exactly what they wanted me to do. Of all of my years of project planning and organizing events, I've never, ever had anything like this happen. I answered as many questions as I could, as fast as I could, but it was never enough. You know? Lauren tried to uh, placate everybody and say that everything was under control. One thing that is really indicative to me of the lack of transparency was a claim that uh, Lauren told, uh, called Janelle one e evening. Just in a panic saying that Kickstarter had taken out a $65 fee because the Kickstarter was done and that they were taking it immediately out of her mother's bank account before transferring it from the Amazon account and that her mom's bank account was going to go dry. She didn't know what to do. We, since we had the money, we volunteered. We totally did it voluntarily, just went to the bank, got the cash, sent it to her. Uh, then another one of the girls involved with the project contacted the Kickstarter people. And asked them about their procedure and they take the money, obviously, straight out of the funds of Kickstarter. Right. It is not taken out of, she lied right to me. I called Lauren in uh, February 24th to ask uh, what was going on. Hey, is this Lauren? Hey, what's up, Lauren? It's Pete. I just want to touch base about the calendar stuff. I know you're probably yeah. like knee deep in it yeah. or whatever, but I didn't. No, uh, I don't claim. First off, I don't claim to know like all the details and nitty gritty, and you know I haven't like. Yeah. So I just, um, I guess wanted to reach out and see what was up. Bitcoin donations were uh, received into a wallet created by Danny, who is uh, called Mr. Janelle by Janelle and then that Bitcoin wallet was liquidated into Federal Reserve notes and it was sent to Lauren. Yeah, Dan, Danny cut his hands on me. I just had to figure out how to, what he wants me to do to finish him. I was going to call him and proceed that still. Danny, I guess, has repeatedly contact, tried to contact her, provided his mailing address, asked for a uh, cashier's check uh, or money order uh, in the amount, but that has not, not materialized. Do the donations still exist? Are you able to refund folks that want to get refunded and everything? Yes. So once the show I was watching was over, I was going to get on uh, the Amazon account and figure out if there's an easy way. Kickstarter is associated with, I guess, Amazon payments, so it went into Amazon. I'm pretty sure there's an easy way to, to refund people that way, and if there's not, you know, I'll figure something out. As long as you're saying that you do have access to the funds and for those... Yeah, I'm just concerned with, at this point, getting it all out and just being done with it and, and making that everybody gets their donation. It shouldn't be that difficult to return the money that uh, people donated uh, to help see this project through. And, and if I have a trustee, the donors are not the ones complaining. Not to me anyway. I pretty much wake up every morning to messages about, have you heard from Lauren? Tony threw out Lauren's number and made memes and all of this stuff, like said, hey, we'll give you till this time. If not, your number's getting thrown out there. Yeah, and that's then, true. And then Lauren went haywire and was all like, I've gotten 48 calls in 15 minutes, like all this stuff. And it's like, well, you know. In the past, I've really only resorted to making public these types of things a couple times. Uh, once was a loan given to a couple uh, in 2009, and uh, you know, repayment of that loan under the conditions agreed upon was non-existent. Uh, I eventually made the situation public, and that seemed to provide a proper uh, motivation mechanism, and eventually get the loan repaid. That was one good example. Another one I would point to is uh, last year there was an individual in Keene who befriended uh, myself and some of the folks that I associate with in the area. Uh, and unfortunately, he later stole uh, some money from one of these individuals and left town. And when I found out a few months later that he was back in town, I approached him with a camera. I asked him about it, and he admitted that he had taken the money and that he uh, was not didn't have any intention to repay it and, in fact, threatened violence. So once I put that out, I mean, I just kind of wanted just to uh, get it out there and make it public. He eventually did recently. Uh, earlier this year 2014 make right he repaid the money so that was great to see you know I don't want to just make it seem like I'm singling out Lauren but it is again just part of a uh, trying to adhere to some ideals that I espouse and that I try to live according to uh, so for example last year Dustin McCaskill who started Southern Oklahoma Cop Lock 
you know, he, it was brought to my attention that he made a statement on the site that, uh, you know, I thought was kind of a blanket statement initi advocating the initiation of force. So we exchanged some communication and I thought we were on the same page after that. But then there was a second example uh, that occurred and uh, I later disassociated myself with him and with Southern Oklahoma Cop Block. I removed that group from the group's page on Cop Block. And I just recently did that with Baltimore Cop Block as well. So there is a Baltimore Cop Watch out there that is still listed on the group's page. And again, you're free to associate or disassociate with wh whoever. We were approached by Lauren at JREV to help promote some of our stuff. And because we asked in our little circles, hey, this person, what do you know about them? We made the decision not to go that route. If you think I'm off base, let me know. But again, just check out the uh, objective information for yourself, listen to everything, and uh, come to your own conclusions. But there's really no documentation that Lauren uh, kept or created or shared with the other people involved with the project. Uh, there were a lot of questions about you know, the donors or the status of the calendar and things like that. And Everybody that was pressing her for, for this um, gave her ample time and everything else to make this right. So, um, you oh, know, yeah. I, I respect you guys. I respect, I respect you guys a lot for saying, Hey, uh, this is pretty shady. Uh, we'll give you some time to make this right. If, if you want to do it and make it right, then go for it. Josie Wales and I, one night actually even had a, a three way conversation with her on the phone and we were like, listen, we want to help you clear your name any way possible. You're saying all this stuff is going on. We have the solutions. It could be done within a matter of hours. I could have done it within an hour. We were, we were really trying to help her out thinking maybe, just maybe, you know, she really doesn't know what she's talking about and what she's doing. You know, we want to help you. We know how to do this. After reading through the, all the screenshots of all the back and forth had between a lot of the girls involved with the project, you know, I, I uh, very much respect and appreciate their attempts to achieve a remedy and get answers. And, uh, you know, I wish they would not have been subjected to what should have been a very beautiful and uh, empowering project. Well, I'd like to see the truth get out. It sounds like some questions have been asked and they've not been answered. And if they don't get answered... I've answered every question they've asked me. I don't understand how I can answer the questions they're asking me, except for the only thing they're taking as proof of anything is me giving the money to somebody else, and that isn't going to happen. I mean, it sounds like transferring the funds to somebody is not even on the table anymore. It sounds like returning donations is where everyone's at. Things do happen. There are always bumps in the road, but this is unacceptable. And I would encourage anybody who uh, knows how in the world to get a hold of Lauren Beth Faulkner and just to, to keep asking her to please return people's money. I've yet to see that. I've yet to hear from many other donors that that has happened. And in fact, it seems like she has purposefully uh, sort of become unreachable. The phone number I have for her is no longer working. Um, the emails that she at one time pointed to as being those that she checked I have not gotten responses from. If you dwell on the past, it's going to control you, so that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to just say my piece and move on, and hopefully Lauren makes right and repays all the donors. It's up to her. We'll see what happens.